Dr. Paul Modric graduated from Raton High School in 1964. He received his bachelor's degree from MIT in 1968 and his doctorate in 1973 from Stanford University. He currently is a professor of biochemistry at Duke University, a member of the Duke Cancer Institute and an investigator with the Howard Hughes Medical Institute. On Wednesday, October 7, 2015, Dr. Modric was awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry, along with his colleagues for explaining and mapping how the human body repairs mistakes in the DNA code. Their research is important to physicians in understanding and combating diseases, notably the most common form of colon cancer. Dr. Modric had his start right here in Raton, following his natural interest and turning it into a career. From the little boy in Raton to a professor at Duke University, he never lost his enthusiasm for science projects. The only difference is now he is a Nobel laureate. It is with great pleasure, it is a great privilege, excuse me, that I introduce today's guest speaker, Dr. Paul Modric. Thank you very much, and my congratulations to the class of 2016. <laughs> it's truly an honor to be here. This evening marks an important step on your way to independence, and my guess is that many in the audience envy you. I certainly do. Your youth, your dreams, the fact that your mortality rarely enters your thinking. But when you get to be my age, you no longer have that luxury. Okay, is that better? All right. So when you get to be my age, you no longer have that luxury. You see your mortality every morning in the mirror. And it's important to point out to you that your mortality is a real thing. Life is a wonderful gift, but it's a one-shot deal. And what you make of it is largely up to you. So I'm certainly not an expert on life, but I've learned a few things during my career. And I'll share them with you, and you can take them for what they're worth. Thought I'd tell you a story. I began here in Raton when I was your age. My dream was to be a scientist, and I applied to colleges with that in mind including two premier universities known for the strength of their science programs, Caltech and MIT. Caltech rejected me, but I got into MIT, and I could hardly believe my luck. I told them I would come. It was one of the most exciting things that had happened to me in my life, during my life in Raton. Then one afternoon after school, I was at a friend's house, and his mother called me over, and she said, you know, Paul, you'll never make it at MIT. And she told me about a young man from Cimarron who'd gone there and flunked out. I was crushed, and what she said scared me. But it was too late to back out. So I went to MIT in the fall, and I quickly found myself in over my head. I'd had a great education in Raton, but many of my MIT classmates came from large urban high schools and prep schools where they'd had more advanced courses. And I, um, and I soon found myself struggling, began to doubt that I'd make it, and thoughts of quitting crossed my mind. I talked to my parents about this problem, and my dad, who was a coach and biology teacher here for many years, told me, son, there's no disgrace in failure if you've done your best. That uh, made me feel a little better, but after I thought more about what he said, I began to wonder whether I really was doing my best. And there was also the issue of letting that woman in Raton be right. So I started working harder, didn't get much sleep, 
but I survived the first semester. And after that, things got much easier because I caught up with my classmates. And I think there are two messages in that story. The first is that if you set your goals high, you'll probably make your life difficult. But if you really want to achieve them, do not give up. Do not quit, because things will get easier once you figure out what you're supposed to be doing. And the second message is that there are people out there who, for various reasons, some of them cruel, will attempt to diminish you or divert you from your goals. Do not let them win. And certainly, do not let them tell you that you're unable to accomplish something simply because you're from Raton. That said, my experience has been that most people out there have good hearts. And I want to tell you about three such people that greatly influenced my career. Learning to be a scientist is much like being an apprentice. You earn your PhD by doing guided research in a laboratory that's studying something that interests you. And then you spend several additional years doing postdoctoral work in another lab to learn something new, uh, again, in a guided fashion. I did my PhD at Stanford under the guidance of a wonderful man named Bob Lehman, working on an enzyme called DNA ligase. And my postdoc with Charles Richardson at Harvard Medical School studying DNA replication. The third person I want to mention is a man named Arthur Kornberg, also at Stanford. Arthur won a Nobel Prize a few years before I arrived, and although for his discovery of the enzyme that copies DNA, and although I was not in his lab, he took an interest in me and in my work. And those three men taught me how to be a scientist, they encouraged me, and when the time came, they helped me obtain my own laboratory. I was, at the time, I was a novice, not much older than you. And those three men were the greatest DNA biochemists in the world. They did not have to do those things, but they did. They helped me. And I've had my own laboratory for 42 years now, and it's been a great experience. I've loved the work. But winning a Nobel Prize is not something I ever expected. And I have to tell you that that is not something, something you accomplish by yourself. It takes a great deal of help. And in my case, that help was 70 talented PhD students and postdoctoral fellows who passed through the lab, each spending four to seven years with me. And working together, and the key word is together, we learned many interesting things. And one of the most important aspects of my job, a responsibility that I've taken very seriously, has been to promote their careers in much the same way that others help me. So the message, and this is important, there are good people out there who would love to help you, especially if you're willing to work hard. Find them, it's up to you to find them. And when you master your profession, pay that help forward to young people with their own dreams. I want to say one last thing and then I'll stop about choices. Your life is a constant series of choices. You make hundreds every day, but some of those choices, and you know this, some of those choices will alter the course of your life. And those important choices are often of two types choice of the easier versus the more difficult path, or the safe versus the risky. The tendency in such situations is usually to choose the easier or the safer option. It's just human nature. But sometimes choosing the more difficult or risky path can take your life to places you never imagined you would go. It did for me. And I'll leave you with that thought, and I want to thank each of you for allowing me to share in your very special evening. Thank you.